welcome to Artful Insights. I'm Shane Farrell, the Digital Projects and Programs Manager for Arts Philadelphia, and together you and I are going to look at some art today. This video is produced in partnership between Dementia Society of America and Arts Philadelphia. Each month we offer a live program where a small group of people talk about a work of art or works of art from museums and cultural centers around the country. Uh, it's a different museum or cultural center each month. And in addition to that live program, we also produce a video like the one you're watching right now. We look at the same works of art as we did in the live group, but with the video, it's 30 to 40 minutes in length. You can watch it any time, day or night, that might suit you. And it's an opportunity to have a more intimate, self-driven conversation about the art. I'll ask a few questions to get us started, give you a few things to think about. I'll share some of the observations and thoughts that folks from the live group brought up that I think might be interesting for you to consider. But really, this video each month is about you. It's about what you see in these works of art, how you respond to them, and just having the opportunity to look at a work of art and think about it at your own pace. If you're watching this video with someone, please feel free to pause from time to time if you'd like so that you can have your own conversation. If you're watching on your own, we're delighted to have you, and it'll be a conversation just between the two of us. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the museum or cultural center that we're visiting today. Welcome to Artful Insights. So here we are at the museum we're going to be visiting today. This is the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston, Massachusetts. Isabella Stewart Gardner uh, built this museum as a sort of uh, dream project of hers. She had been collecting art for some time and decided to build a building to house it that was modeled off of a 15th century Venetian palazzo. So that's the building we're looking at right now. That's why it has the very unique look that it does. Throughout the process of building the building, she was very, very involved uh, to the point that apparently the architects and engineers kind of had to keep her away from the construction site. So um, she used the museum to house many of the works she had been collecting uh, before she started construction on the museum. And in 1924, when she passed away, she created a trust that ensured that the museum would be open for the enjoyment and education of the public forever. And since then, the museum has been continuously open to the public. Its collection spans all sorts of cultures, and periods of art, but there's a big emphasis, as you might imagine, in a building that is based off of a 15th century Venetian palazzo on a lot of Renaissance era art. Uh, there are many famous artists that you might recognize the names of in the collection of the museum, Raphael, Botticelli, Michelangelo, just to name a few. And to add a little bit of a fun fact, or perhaps a not fun, so fun fact. In the 1990s, the museum was victim of one of the largest art thefts of all time that's still sort of an unsolved mystery, where a number of very famous works of art that are worth quite a bit of money were stolen and have never been recovered. So just kind of an interesting tidbit about this museum. It's undergone some expansions since uh, 1903 when it originally opened in 1924 when the trust was created to make sure it was accessible continuously to the public. They expanded with a new building uh, focused on history and preservation in 2002. And 
Now that we've learned a little bit about the museum, about its history, about its collection, why don't we go ahead inside and take a look at the artwork that we're going to be looking at today. So here is the artwork that we're going to be looking at today. I want you, before we have any sort of conversation about this, just to take some time on your own to look at this artwork and see what you notice. Where does your attention go first? And then after that initial thing that you notice, what other details do you start attending to in this artwork? So just take a few moments, let your eye go wherever it wants to go, let your mind take you wherever it wants to take you, and just take some time to observe. After you do that, we'll come back together and we'll have a little bit of a discussion about it. So now that you've had some time to look this over, what were some of the things that you noticed first? What caught your attention? I'd be very curious to hear what sort of things you noticed about this right away. What jumped out at you? Something that jumped out at some of our participants in our group conversation on Zoom was the lighting. What do you notice about the lighting of this artwork? Well, someone in the group said, the lighting is very, very dramatic. Would you agree with that assessment of the lighting in this artwork? Does it look dramatic to you? It looks kind of dramatic to me. I think I would tend to agree with that. What about it do we think is particularly dramatic? What gives that kind of feeling of very intense lighting? Well, something that I notice is that there are lots of very, very dark colors almost black in this artwork. And then there are very bright spots of light as well. So for example, if we look at the dress of the figure here, it's very, very bright, almost kind of dazzling white. But then if we look in the area around her, there is very, very dark, almost pitch black kind of colors. And you'll notice something kind of similar throughout. The figures in the background, very dark colors. We can barely even see the bottom half of them. And then very kind of bright white shirts. The shadows in the background are something we might notice as well. We have these very clear cast shadows on the wall. There's a lot of very high contrast, and there's a lot of elements like the shadows that add maybe a sense of drama or movement. 
a question that we'll ask a lot when we talk about lighting in our group discussions is where do we think the light source is coming from? If you look at this artwork, is there a particular place you think that the light might be coming from? Well, we did note some shadows in the back, for example, right here, right over the heads of these two figures, and right here. So that might indicate that there's a light source directly in front of where these figures are. That would also explain why the dress on the figure toward the side here is so bright white, because maybe there's a light right in front of her. How do you think the lighting in this painting creates a certain mood? Does it, does it make you feel a particular way? And why does it make you feel that particular way? Another person observed that the lighting created a sense of drama and movement, and maybe that was connected to music. They noticed there are some instruments in the background. The woman in the front looks like she may be dancing. And if we look very closely at this shadow, Back here, we might notice that we see similar shapes to the woman in the front. So an arm going out here, this could be the head and the neck, this could be the shoulder. So perhaps the lighting is creating a sense of musicality. When you look at this scene, is there a certain specific type of music that you hear? And why do you think that is? What gives you the sense that there is a certain type of music playing here? I'd be very curious to know what sort of tunes you are hearing when you look at this painting. It might sound a little bit strange to say, what do you hear when you look at a painting? But when we see people playing musical instruments, like these two men here in the background, we kind of naturally start to wonder what kind of tune they might be playing, right? One of our participants in our discussion on Zoom said, I think they're playing flamenco music. What do you think? Is that the kind of music that you're hearing? Or do you hear something different? Someone noticed after we talked about flamenco music that maybe it looked like the dancer was holding something in her hands. You get the sense that she's holding something. Do you see an object there that she might be holding on to? We can zoom in a little bit on her and talk a little bit more about what she might be doing. So now that we've zoomed in a little bit more on the dancer, let's talk again about the possibility that she's holding something. So someone had mentioned maybe she's holding castanets. So she's holding an instrument, basically, that's helping her make a kind of percussive sound. Do you get a sense looking at this that you're hearing a uh, very percussive type of music, very focused on drums and other percussion sounds and rhythm? Someone else mentioned, 
Oh yeah, in flamenco music, don't dancers often stomp on the ground to make a certain kind of percussive noise to go along with the rhythm of the music? It looks like the dancer here might be lifting up on her skirt with this hand so that her foot down here can stomp on the ground and make a sound. And that brings up a number of interesting questions. So, for example, what sort of dancing do we think this person is doing? Do we get the impression that it's a very intense kind of dance where she might be stomping and moving very dramatically and making a lot of noise as she moves across what might be a stage? Or do we think this is kind of a gentler kind of dancing? Someone in our group discussion said, maybe it's ballet. I don't know what kind of music people dance to in ballet, but maybe it's ballet, which is sort of, you know, a gentler kind of movement, right? Where the dancer is kind of trying to appear almost weightless. So do we get the impression this is a more intense, percussive type of dancing, or maybe something more gentle and relaxed? What do you think? And what details give you that idea? Well, something that might guide us in trying to figure out what sort of music and what sort of dancing are happening here are what all the other figures are doing. And there is one figure in particular right here that one of our participants noticed during our group discussion on Zoom. So let's zoom in on him a little bit. So when we look at this figure here, what does it seem like they're doing? What does this posture indicate to us? What do you notice about them first? Well, one of the first things that I notice is that their head is thrown back like this. So that might indicate something in particular. What do you think it might mean that their head is thrown back as they're either participating in or watching this performance? Well, one person suggested that maybe they were singing. They're throwing their head back because they're so involved in the music, involved in the singing that they're doing. They're projecting their voice and they're just kind of enraptured by the performance that they're a part of. Do you think this person might be singing? Or do you think something else might be going on here? Another person suggested that maybe this person is just so taken in by the performance that they're kind of throwing their head back just kind of shouting out about their enjoyment. That could be a possibility too. When people get really involved in music, sometimes they just want to express how the music is making them feel. So maybe this person is just expressing how he's feeling listening to this music. And... How do we think he looks like he's feeling? What do you think? To me, whether he's singing or reacting to the music, it looks like he's having a very intense reaction to it. His mouth is open pretty wide. His head is thrown back. To me, it seems like 
he's really involved in what's going on here. Have you ever gone to a concert or seen a musical performance that made you feel this way, like you just wanted to throw your head back and shout out you were so involved in the music you were hearing? I would love to hear about what your experiences are with music that have made you feel very intense emotions, the way it looks like this man might be. So why don't we zoom back out for a moment now. So now that we've zoomed back out, what else do we notice about this artwork that we haven't talked about already? Well, something some of our participants in our online group discussion noticed were the figures on the right here. So let's zoom in again and let's take a look at them and see what they might be doing. So when we look at these figures in the background on the side of the painting, what does it look like they're doing? Well, someone suggested that it kind of looks like they're clapping. We see someone with their hands raised kind of like this, another figure next to them raising their hands in a similar way, a way that looks like they're clapping together. What do you think? Does it look like they're clapping? It seems like no matter who we look at in the background, they're feeling very involved in the music that's being played, in the dancing that's happening, whether they're clapping along to the rhythm or just applauding the musicians or the dancer. To me, they look very involved in what's going on. What do you think? Do they look like very involved participants who are really interested in the performance that's happening? Or do they look like they're just kind of calmly detached from what's going on? Well, it seems like whatever's happening here is really making people feel very passionately about it. We have people clapping, we had a man throwing his head back, perhaps to sing or just to shout out. So perhaps that tells us something more about the music that might be being played here. So now that we've observed some of these details, we've observed people's reactions. Do you think about the music that might be being played here differently? What do we think would cause these sorts of, what to me look like very intense reactions in the people in the scene? What kind of music really gets people involved and passionate in this way? Well, as we think about that question, let's zoom back out for a moment and observe some other things about the painting. Well, we've talked a lot about what's going on in this scene, about what people might be doing, about what kind of music we might be hearing. But let's take a step back from that and just observe some kind of formal things about the artwork. So something one of our participants in the Zoom discussion pointed out was the use of color in the painting. We talked a little bit about lighting, but now let's talk about color. 
What do you notice about the use of color in this painting? What colors are you observing? What, what colors are catching your eye? Well, one of our participants noted that the artist was working with a very limited palette. Would you agree with that? Do you think there's a kind of small amount of colors in this painting? I would sort of tend to agree with that. We see a lot of blacks, grays, white colors, maybe some brown colors down where the ground is here. Then we see a few splashes of really bright colors. Where do you notice really bright colors in this painting? Well, I notice them in a couple places. First, I notice them over here at the people we were looking at a few minutes ago on their clothing. So we see this kind of bright red orange color on the dress here the kind of purpley color here there's some bright colors tucked into what is otherwise a pretty black white gray and brown painting and then we see over here another bright color Another kind of red-orange, right on this chair here. What do you think about the use of color? There's not a ton of different color in this painting, and then there are these very bright areas. It tends to really draw our attention there, doesn't it? Do you find that you are drawn toward these areas with bright color? Well, if we take a look at the chair, notice that there's something sitting on the chair here. What do you, what do you think that might be? Why is there just a little object sitting on the chair here? Curious to hear what you think it might be. One of the participants in our group discussion on Zoom said, I think it might be an orange. And there's a certain type of orange that's from Spain and associated with Spain. Maybe it's that type of orange. And this is trying to tell us where we are, that the artist is showing us a particular type species of orange to let us know where in the world this artwork is taking place. What do you think about that idea? I thought that was pretty interesting. Do you think that might be what we're looking at, or do you think it's something else entirely? Well, after we started looking at these details, looking at colors, we just couldn't help but stop talking about music while we looked at this. And someone said, actually, I've seen flamenco music before, and it's this very intense performance. She described it as a broken heart wailing away. And she said when she saw that singer in the background, if we think he's singing, or he could just be shouting out. But as she saw the person in the background that we looked at earlier, she thought of that flamenco music she had heard, and she thought of someone just kind of wailing away about their broken heart. I think that's an interesting place to kind of finish up our discussion of we had talked about 
the mood here. We had talked about what kind of music we might be hearing. We had talked about how the artist used lighting to create a certain atmosphere. And it brought up this very powerful memory for one of our participants about seeing flamenco music and the emotions that she was feeling when she heard that music. So perhaps if you'd like, you could pause the video and put on some flamenco music and see if you think it fits with what's going on in this painting. I'd be very curious to hear your observations as you look at this artwork with a little bit of music. Well, I hope you've enjoyed looking at this artwork with me today and sharing some of your observations about it. Really love to hear what sort of things you notice about this artwork that I might not have talked about. But now that our discussion is wrapping up, I just want to give a few details about this artwork. It's by John Singer Sargent. It's an artist you might be familiar with. And the work is called El Haleo. It was painted in 1882. It's oil on canvas. It's very large, about 90 some inches by 137 inches. And the title roughly translates as the ruckus. So when we were talking about the kind of noise we were hearing in this artwork, it was intended to be a kind of very noisy kind of scene, right? A total ruckus. So perhaps as you look at this one more time and think about the title, you'll pick up on more sounds that you might have heard when you were looking at this. I want to give a big thanks to the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum for inviting us to look at their collection together. I especially want to thank Elizabeth Reluga, who helped make this program possible. So just a big thanks to Elizabeth for all of her help. I really hope you enjoyed looking at this artwork with me today, and I hope you might consider joining us at one of our live programs over Zoom that we have toward the end of each month, every month on a Monday. The program is called Artful Insights, and if you'd like to join us, you can register at our website, which is artsphilly.org. That's arts with a Z. I hope to see you there. I hope you've enjoyed our discussion today. I'm Shane Farrell, the Programs Director for Arts Philadelphia, and this has been another episode of Artful Insights. Music